This week, shop steward Jack Eccles is in trouble. Not with the wallpaper factory, nor the union, or his duties at the working men's club, but with women. What Jack, you said uh, last week's programme about the place of a woman is behind the cooker. Is that? Yeah. Well, I weren't talking of, in general, really, we're in the, them women in green and common, that's what we're originally talking about. I think majority of them would be better off at the back of a gas cooker than being at bloody green and common. And I've had some stick about it too. There was a woman in London, her brow was smouldering because I said that. But never mind. What she do you really think? What do you really think about women? They should be at test, shouldn't they? Making your tea, shouldn't they? Making your tea, doing your shirts, being nice to you when you come home. Yes, that's what you work for, isn't it? Makes for a happy family life, I suppose. That's what they put it down to, isn't it? You don't want them... Uh... I'd hate to think I were coming home one day and Oh, I've gone to green, I'm coming. We're no tea ready. It'd be a disaster, wouldn't it? For her, and for me. That is, too, is that? That would be a bloody disaster. But your wife's the backbone of his family, isn't she? No, I ain't backbone. I can't be nothing else. Work seven days a week for 20 bloody year. Must be. So she what? She hasn't worked 20 days. She worked this out 20 years. That's not a proper bloody job. What is a proper job? For the housework, they can do it in an hour. An hour a day. Should be enough. Get their minds to it. Buckle in. Jack's not alone. It's an attitude we've heard in the pubs and clubs, admittedly by more men than women. Someone with an alternative view is Mary Allen. A feminist is one that likes all her own way, but not this business that likes Jermaine Greer, and I'm not being uncharitable to the woman, but when you start bawling her over being a feminist, it's a bit there. But you still have to boss the fellas, but not let them know. Be a bit more up at you. I'll give you some lessons. Yeah. Be a bit more up here, that's what you've got to do. Because they don't like it, don't fellas? Definitely not. They like women to be underneath. They do. Nobody ever thought Emily Pankhurst would make any difference. I'll tell you what, she's got it's a thought for the women, didn't she? It doesn't mean they're right because they're women. Women's place is behind the gas cube. <sighs> If I, I didn't want to smash Telly, but I felt that if it were mine, I will, I must see him because I must put him right. But also, we can do far better things, and I can match Jack any time. I hope I'm given that opportunity. I'll kill him. Jack and I get on like a bomb if, if I met him. I think they'd be sparks flying. Because really, when you think about all these men that are knocking them out, who do they all the life to? A woman. Standing resolutely behind Jack and the gas cooker is his wife, Sybil. Behind every great man lies a good woman. Well, that was said in history and it's true. Always there has to be a woman behind every man. Definitely. Jack! 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 Bloody nonsense.
Well, I'll be going to club first, and from there, I don't know. Depends if Harvey's out or his bride. Ted will not be out. Well, he'll be out, but he'll not be with me because me and his wife's fallen out. So I don't know where we'll be going. They're unnamed, I think. Highfield first, pick Jack up. And Harvey, no doubt. Much nicer tie that in the style. Polka dot. So I don't know what we'll do. Well, I'll meet you across at the club. I've to bring your car. You certainly have. And you were driving. Am I? Yep. Driving shoes on there tonight. I'll see you. Yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Bye. He's a bit of a chauvinist, I'll admit that. But uh, as long as I can have a night out and go on holiday and do things that um, maybe the women down south do do, enjoyment-wise, then I don't mind. I don't mind what Jack thinks as long as he doesn't keep me in. equal rights you know I don't uh, I just don't want it I mean no. read in the paper the other day about trying to put the pensions up to 63 for women I mean I think that's you know that's awful we personally. transfer over. it should be 50 50 for women yeah, yeah. And bringing the men down to 63 you know mm. I think women should finish when they're 50 yeah. because they're working they're they're working all the time they're going home from work and they're starting work again yeah. and many a time it's nine o'clock before you it's actually sitting down they've made their tea they've cleaned up iron washed and then they're sitting down about nine o'clock, and then by that time you have a brew, you read paper. You're what they say work. about women, it's all bed and work. You don't, you know, you don't get much time to relax except for the weekend. No. I know what you and mean. And that's only if you've caught up with your work during the week. If you're working, I'm talking about a working woman mm. now. Yeah. Just a working woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, men still think that we're the underdogs. No matter whether we've got a reasonable rights or not. That's how I, you know, that's, that's my mind. Yeah, men do think we're underdogs. I'm not saying I am. And you know, but men do think that a lot. Up at the country club, the Darwin Young Conservatives are recovering from a strenuous Bournemouth conference. Apart from all that, the thing that came across for me was the uh, the unity which there is in the party at the moment behind the leader, Mrs. Thatcher. Uh, for, for me, the weekend was uh, a very worthwhile trip. <laughs> Even at the conference, they viewed Vox Pop. But I think Jack Eccles and his. Uh, his sweeping analysis of the female role was a bit arbitrary, <laughs> to put it mildly. Uh, I think a lot of women are as capable as men as, as doing, uh, for, for doing certain jobs and, and, and for taking certain roles as Margaret Thatcher has shown. They're striving so desperately to be equal. Nothing wrong with a girl having her own ideas about something and, 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 and like Margaret Thatcher, I mean she has her own ideas and there are not many women who, who would carry out this, the, the, the ideas that Margaret Thatcher did or speak with the, the authority that Margaret Thatcher this, did, right? This high-bound fanatical approach that some of these beer-swilling feminists have is, uh, leaves me completely cold. Well, Mrs Thatcher is, is, is one of the most successful women in the Western world and she doesn't need to drink bites of beer or wear jeans to, to have achieved that. She hasn't lost any of her femininity. She, she's not the sort of woman that I, I personally find attractive for the sake of being a woman. I admire her tremendously for her qualities. Mm. She's, she doesn't lose any of her charm. She's very charming. Right, yeah, yeah, she's yeah, the, she's yeah. the sort of archetypal middle-aged 
uh, English lady, isn't she? You know, I think that's the, she's what everybody's mother looks like. You know? That's right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I say going back to my days, I'm not saying the generation now haven't got respect for their parents, but I think we had a little bit more respect for our parents. I think we were a little bit more. Um, yeah, we were stricter, weren't we? Well, yeah. That's why they were stricter. I, yeah, I think it was a lot of shame. There was more shame attached to it then, and I think this is. Uh, this is what puts you off doing it. I'm not saying you didn't want to do it. I'm not saying everybody must have premarital sex. When I was courting, you know, I think um, there weren't the contraceptives. And if, I think, uh, well, there was contraceptives from then. And um, I mean, I'll admit, I wasn't a virgin when I got married. Um, you know, a lot of people think uh, that we didn't do it then. Well, we did. I mean, even our mothers did it before marriage, I mean, uh, and all that, but uh, I think if there had been the pill, I think it would have been uh, better, because I think we were, I were, we were frightened, on edge all the time. I'd had a disappointment in love, so I weren't going to bother any more with men, and then I met Rendell, and he'd had a disappointment in his life, and he weren't going to bother with women, and he met me, there you are, that's that's the outcome of it all. How boring. Right, anything else you want to know? I've only had two children, they're very demanding. And to give them a lot, you need a lot of time. And when you're a career woman, your children take a second place. In some cases, I don't think it harms children. Now, other children are constantly needing the parents. A traditional approach to female children can create problems for the immigrant family. I think it's our duty, it's our job, parents' job, to learn kids about uh, our own religion. Because they're going to English school, they're not going to Pakistani school. <laughs> Obviously, they're going to learn about uh, English way of life and at the same time, just because it's uh, their English school, they're going to learn a little bit about the uh, Bible and all. And I don't think there's any harm in uh, learning about any religion, as long as they stick to their own religion. I know Anila, she's, a, she's, a, she's born in England, but she's, she, uh, don't forget, she's a born Muslim as well, same time, because her father and mother, they're both Muslim. And my wife, she always, you know, makes sure she gets uh, enough Muslim education at home. Anila, she'll be free. She she'll be allowed to uh, do and uh, anything she wants, change her religion or uh, you know marry. Uh, wherever she wants and whichever religion she wants to marry with. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure, you know, it, it runs in, like it's, run, it's a tradition, you know. There, there's bound to marry a, a Muslim, a Pakistani bloc. Uh, but still I can't force her to do that, you know. She'll be free. It's come this side. I mean, nobody can force kids, you know. This is a free country. And kids know, you know, children know their right. Once they're 18, they know what what they write is. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a waste of time if I'm just uh, trying to hit Anila or, you know, trying to force my kid if she's doing something nasty. I mean, I hope not, but if she's doing something which nobody in uh, my family has done it before. So I know it'll be a bad name to my family. Meet my friend here. This is Jeffrey. <laughs> this is Jane. Oh. Mm. Dennis. 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 Dennis.
If they're in a man's job, they have to do it twice as good. Because they picked on if they don't. But women, eh, they do fantastic jobs. I mean, they, they're every bit as clever as men are. And if not clever, definitely. Women want equality in the good job. You don't want any bad job. I've never ever heard a women's liver saying, I want a job there fit, or cold face, or I want a job hog carry. They want to be brain surgeons, managers of banks. You know, they want all the good jobs. Now, if we're going to have equality with women, then we should all be on the same. They should all be able to work nights. The shifts, work weekends, work down the pit. I'm retired at 65, like us. Probably, he'd like to be a male chauvinist, and he likes to make people think that he is, but actually, no, he's not. He's not. Um, Money-wise, for instance, he hands his wage over. I've never seen a bill. I don't know what gas bill is or money like it. Well, that's not my job. The woman's job. Now they have to get in problems with money, then they tell you. But like I said, I'm not a women's liver anyway, and uh, I like to be looked after. I bet majority of women like fellas to open the door for them, send them Valentine cards, send them flowers, and all this stuff, and they like it. But they don't like it when they don't get their own way. They don't like you saying. I'm going down to the club tonight for a pint or two, and they want to stop in. I wouldn't say that he's a drunk. He doesn't go out every night and get drunk or anything like that. Um, he's not a wife batter. I mean, that's one thing I wouldn't stand. Don't forget, you know, women have, you know, every every month they have their bloody periods and all that. They go around the bloody twist, don't they, some of them? So they get awkward for a week. So you. you you try and be nice for a week and then you go back to normal for the next three weeks. He likes to uh, to run the club, shall we say, but I run the home. She has run the house because it's easier for me to let her do it. But it was never, ever stopped me going out. I only work part-time. If I want anything new in the house or clothes-wise, I only need to ask. Very rarely. Very rare that he refuses. She said, I want to go out to work. So I let her go out to work. She'd been going out to work about six months, she said, I want to pack up. I said, well, I can't pack up, because I wanted to do it, they'll let her keep doing Because we can't afford you now to, to stop. You live to what you earn. The working people of this country, if your wife didn't go out to work, you'd be sat at home watching telly every week. Everybody in the country, and includes me, we want everything that everybody else is. We want i fis we want continental holidays, we want everything else that other people Now I couldn't envisage when I were 25 that I were going to have a car, colour telly, an ass of my own, going all this to Jersey and things like that. I could never envisage that. But the only reason we've got it is because we let us wives go out to work. For people like Bob and Miriam, choice is not an option. Bob, an ex-miner, has bad lungs, legs and is unemployed. Miriam, severely handicapped by polio. Yet, while their income is from the state, their strength comes from themselves. I think if you can talk to each other and uh, talk it over your problems, you're like your, what you have to pay, what you haven't to pay, and what can we have today and what can we have tomorrow? You know, and like, if you're only on one wage, I think that makes it a bit more difficult. But if you're both working, you know, you can, uh, you can do these things, you know, like go out for meals and, and uh, you know, go to concerts and things like that. But like I say, in my marriage, I haven't been able to do that, you see, because I've dedicated my life to my children, you see. Now, they're getting off my hands and it's time that I had a bit of enjoyment in my life. You know, but I'm not one for like drinking or bingo. All I like is my holiday. I look forward to my holiday with my husband, you know. My husband's coming up to 65. And I'm not getting any younger. The children are getting older. They want their life. They'll be getting married. There'll only be two of us. And I'd like myself personally. Like I say, I love the sea. And I'd love to go to the seaside and have a little bungalow. And that's what I would like. 
across at the new inn, Millie plans a practical dream. I'd like an apartment. I don't want a villa. I don't want a lot of work. It's only for Bill and I. Bill's going to Mallorca. He's going over to have a look at some apartments because we'll hope to retire there, God willing. With us going so many years now, I mean, everybody, we know everybody. In fact, I know more there than I do in Darwin, to be honest. You know what I mean? I mean, there isn't a shop that we pass it. Hello, Mama. You know, back again, you know. And I mean to say, it's just a different atmosphere altogether. Really, uh, I'm not going to miss England a lot. At least I'll be able to open my door and go out. Because there's no way I'd do that at night here. No way at all. I mean, to say, good gracious, how many muggins has there been lately? There's been quite a few muggins lately around here. By the time we had a bit of sunshine, you get nothing here, do you? No, not really. <laughs> nothing but rain, especially in Darwin. No. So when are you hoping to um, retire? Well, it'll be about three to four years. Bill's 61. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to going to Mallorca because uh, it's a lot, a lot cheaper to live. And uh, I'm quite surprised when I go over there now, the, the senior citizens that are retiring over there. They've got some tremendous complexes which they've made it reasonable for them. Is it south of Spain or sort of uh, north yeah, of Spain or where? No, south. What about? Mallorca. It's Mallorca. <laughs> it won't blow. Well, uh, actually, the climate that sort of uh, my wife, it appeals to her. And with her health, it, she seems to be all right better over there. She's a different person over there. And same as with myself, really. As I'm going over on the plane, you get these old senior citizens uh, with you, and they're sort of white and... We won't say miserable, because they know they're going to the plane, then we meet them about, say, four days afterwards. And they like 18-year-olds, they are linking, going down the prom, and... Uh, a different atmosphere, a different atmosphere altogether. Where are you travelling to, sir? Alma. Alma? Yes. How's the weather? Have you heard out there, please? I believe it's very nice. If one ambition would be, if I had enough money, would buy a small piece of sand land six paddle boats and run the beach. It's gate number nine, boarding at half past nine. Thank you very nice much time. indeed. Yeah. The, the only thing is that when I come back and I've got this assortment, unfortunately, uh, with my wife having to see this uh, specialist in uh, Victoria Hospital Blackpool about the change of this valve to a heart, it's all deciding on that. If uh, if uh, she has to have it done, well, we'll have to slow down a little while, you know, because uh, although he's a great man, this man that's doing it, there's always going to be that mistake, which we're not thinking of that now. So uh, we we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed that, uh, you know, <laughs> everything... I'll just have to stop smoking, won't I? And then it won't block my valve up again. I'm trying now to stop before I go in, but... Uh... It was announced this week that the government had a committee redefining the role of the state in family life. In a Guardian exclusive claiming proposals would seriously reduce the welfare state, the government was seeking private provision for social needs, families looking after the elderly, disabled and unemployed, mothers staying home, schools reorganised. I think it's about time that uh, there were radical changes in the education system. I think it's been very hard on headmasters to know that he might have um, undesirable elements in his school. It's also very hard on parents, and really headmasters have had no say in being able to fire a teacher. Uh, I think if the government proposals come into being that um, teachers are employed to start with on short-term contracts, it's got to be for the good of the children, and after all that's what we're concerned about, basically whether our children are getting a good education, whether their heads are being filled full of left-wing indoctrination, which frightens me.
Mrs Thatcher under fire from demonstrators in Lancashire and tonight from Labour's Neil Kinnock, his charge, stocking-footed fascism. I think the welfare state as a whole needs radical reform from every angle. I think the whole system wants reforming. The whole welfare system of, of state benefits wants reforming. It's, it's just not good enough. Yeah, it's wakey time, it's tea time. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. You've got a dirty face, my man. I don't see that it's fair that two people living next door to each other with the same commitments, a man that doesn't go to work should be getting as much from state benefits as a man that is working. It's just not fair. Talk to them. <laughs> Bad temper little thing. You foxy. If people are going to live on state benefits, they, sh they shouldn't be as well off. They should realise that the incentive in life is to go to work to earn the luxuries, not to sort of sit at home and expect the government to pay for them. OK, I agree, the government has a duty to, to keep people up to a decent living standard. But is a decent living standard a new car at the door and a video recorder and a colour television and nobody in the house working? I don't think it is. No tougher tea, mate. Eh? You want some tea tonight? No. Why? You're not hungry? No. I think the present system where people just go into a social security office and can more or less say anything they like is open to a, an awful lot of criticism by normal people. Would you not just like a little bit of something? No. Oh, your tummy's going to be empty. I think everybody knows cases where, you know, the, the, there's somebody in their street or somebody that they go to the pub with that they know perfectly well is claiming some sort of benefit that they're not entitled to for, for whatever reason. And, of course, this is going to mean that there will have to be some other sort of system, whether that be uh, officers going round to people's homes. But people that are claiming benefits now have to go through some form of means test I mean, it's, it's just a fact of life. If you're going to claim from the state, then the state has a right to know about your private income. Um, it's going to cause a lot of criticism. People aren't going to like it, and especially if the media call it a means test. Come on. More, kids. Go around, Mom. Come on. No, not so fast. Go on. Go on. More, kids. More, kids, yeah. Hey, you, did you hear? 